Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Remember the scripture, it says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. Or a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And if you remember, one of the things I said two weeks ago is this, that all your problems, everything that you're going through, all your issues, all your challenges, all your shortcomings, can all be traced right back to the day you were born. Amen. Everything that you're going through, all your issues, all your, your, you know, your, your shortcomings, all your personality problems, you know, all the things that you don't like about yourself or all the things that are wrong about you can all be traced back to the day you were born. Me, I don't have any issues, no problems. Just kidding. I was born perfect. I was born with six-pack abs. I still have them. They're just hiding. But anyway, everything that you have ever been through, everything that you, all the problems, you know, all those little things, the little quirky things you have, you know, like sometimes people are weird, like they, for some reason they want the toilet seat up or down, and, you know, they roll the toothpaste or instead of squeezing it, all those things that bother you go all the way back to the day you were born. And that's why Jesus came along and said, you must be born again. That fixes the problem of humanity. Real simple. You know, we spend time in, on the chair. Remember I talked to you about the guy who had a problem, right? He went to see a psychiatrist, and the psychiatrist said, you know, what's your problem? And he says, well, I feel like a dog. Janice likes this joke. Says, I feel like a dog. Everybody treats me like a dog. And then the psychiatrist says, well, how long have you been feeling this way? He says, ever since I was a puppy. And then he goes, well, why don't you hop on a, up on the couch and we'll talk about it. He goes, I can't, I'm not allowed. <laughs> so, so, you know, er, psychiatrists have a place. You know, Keith was here. Uh, Keith Holiday was here a couple weeks ago. Psychiatrists have a place in society to help you make sense of a lot of things that you think about. But, but the issue is not that. The issue is the day you were born, you inherited stuff from a fallen world from Adam's sin, Adam and Eve's sin. And so Jesus came along and said, this, listen, you know, Lady Gaga sings a song, right? I was born this way, right? I'm not going to sing for you, I know. But she sings, I was born this way. Well, that's true, you were born that way. But Jesus said, here's how you fix it. Get born again. And if you get born again, something new happens. Something new comes into existence. It says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. In other words, something just, something is birthed. Some, something that never existed before. A new creation just, just begins. And he says, all things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now the problem we have is letting go of those old things. Right? Because we keep those old things with us. And those old things include uh, low self-esteem, includes anger, fear, uh, anxieties, right? All those things... Uh, alcoholism, drug addictions, all the addictions, all those things that plague humanity are in the old things. But, but Paul said, you know, all those things are gone away. So what we have to do is learn how to get rid of them. And that comes from renewing your mind, is to learn and understand who this new creature is. Who am I in Christ? What, what am I all about? Because all you know is what you were born, right? I, I'm just, I'm like my dad. Or, you know, he, whatever he, he was a fisherman, I, I'm a fi I like to fish. You know, whatever he, his personality, sometimes, you know, I say things to my kids, and I'm like, oh, gee, there goes my dad speaking again. Right? And you swear you'll never be like your dad, right? Uh, you know, those things that, that, you know, when you used, I used to get hit by the belt. And, you know, I, I don't think I ever hit the kids with the belt. No, never. Never. But those are things like you just don't want, you know, there's some things that you don't want to be like. And I was like, well, there goes my dad coming out of me again. And there's a lot of good things there, right? But those old things are what we have to understand and how do we deal with them. And the Bible says, renew your mind and learn who that new person is. How do you learn about it? Through the Bible. It's in the Bible. The Bible tells us exactly who the new creature in Christ is. The new creature in Christ doesn't sin. The new creature in Christ, it gets angry, but, but sins not. 
Well, how does that happen? The new creature in Christ doesn't fear. How many times God said, don't fear, fear not, fear not, fear not. Somebody said that uh, the Bible says 365 times, fear not. Why? One for each day. Every time you get up, you're afraid. Right? The Bible says be anxious for nothing. The Bible says that you've been healed by his stripes. So we know that, you know, cancer comes, diseases come, things like that come. So how do we deal with it? Well, we run to Christ. In Christ, we're healed. In Christ, we're blessed. In Christ, we're new. In Christ, we're the head and not the tail. In Christ, we're not that little puppy always getting beat up. In Christ, we're above and not beneath. And so we have to learn what it is to be in Christ. Now, living our lives, there's, there's something called self-control. And I think if we learn how to control ourselves, because people really love controlling other people, right? You know, you know, you ever see control freaks? But if we learn how to stop controlling others but control ourselves, I think we would really learn what the diff we'd change. We'd be a totally different person. So go to 1 Corinthians chapter 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Be there yet? Hurry up. I got a lot to preach about. And we got a, a party to go to. An engagement party. What? A lunch party. You're not invited, sorry. Well, it depends on who's paying. First Corinthians chapter 9. First Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24. I got a real long introduction before I get to where I want to get to. First Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24. It says this. Ready? Do you not know that those who run in a race all run? But one receives the prize. Only one, right? Second place. Nobody remembers second place. Even if you're a split second behind number one, you still lose. Nobody remembers second place. You always have to be number one. Number one gets the prize. So notice it says, uh, verse 24, he says, But run in such a way that you may obtain it. Watch verse 25. And everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a perishable crown, but we an imperishable crown. The word temperate means self-control. Can you imagine Mike Tyson the night before a fight eating Twinkies? It doesn't make sense, right? Because he's ready to be in a fight. He's got to win. And so what does he do? He exercises self-control over his body. He trains. He runs. He lifts weights. He does everything he has to do. Why? Because he's in a fight. And so whether you know this or not, life is a fight. Thank you for your amens. I'm not trying to be Mr. Negative, but the truth is life is a fight. You wake up in the morning and you've got, listen, I wake up in the morning and my body says, no, you don't want to get up today. Today's a really good day to stay in bed. And then Ariana's like, Dad, it's 7.15, you got to take me to school. So it's always a fight. Then you get up and you check, you know, you, get, you check the mail and you got bills to pay. Another fight. Who's trying to take a pound out of you, right? They, you know, whatever, who's trying to take a pound of flesh out of you. And who's doing this to you? And you get on, on the road and somebody's cutting you off, it's a fight. And then a lot of people just can't wait to go to bed because it's a fight. And so, but you have to, you have to train. In life, you have to train. You have to learn what to put yourself through. But it says here, it says to be self-controlled. Being self-controlled is like training. Mike Tyson, when he goes into a fight, well, he used to, he's an, you know, an older boxer. When he goes into a fight, he doesn't eat the Twinkies. He controls himself. And so we have to learn how to control ourselves, too. How do you do that? If you don't say no more than you say yes in life, you got a problem. If you don't say no more than you say yes, you've got a problem. Because if you're saying yes all the time, you're allowing a lot of stuff in your life that shouldn't be there. Because everybody wants to say yes. It's easy to say yes. Everybody's always coming at you, say, hey, you want to do this? Yeah, sure. You want to do that? Yeah. Hey, can I have $5? Sure, yes. Can I get 20 Yes, yeah, sure. Yes, 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 yes. But you need to lear learn how to say no. No is a little harder, and your body is the number one thing that always wants things, and that's the thing you have to say no to. Amen. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, go to 1 Peter chapter 5. 1 Peter chapter 5. So this is a, it's a long intro till I get to my point. 1 Peter chapter 5. One of the things that we people lack is self-control. Why? Because we don't want to say no. 
There's so much in the world that the world has to offer that we just don't want to say no. 1 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8 says this, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil walks around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. The word for sober means not to be intoxicated or affected by the use of drugs and alcohol. Isn't it true that when you're intoxicated, you don't think right? Think about how many women have been taken advantage of because of alcohol in a bar scene, or they drop a little pill in you. Why they do that? So your thinking is not right. Because when you're sober, what happens? You're awake. You know what's going on. And it says, be vigilant. In other words, you're always looking around. So I need to say this. Listen, there are people out there that just want to take you out. There are things out there that don't want you around. But you got to be awake. you got to be sober. you got to be vigilant. Now, cancer doesn't want you around. Think about it. I mean, my mother should have been dead years ago, years ago. When we were just about, when we first got married. No, actually, when I went to Bible school, the first thing they told, she came back and the doctor told us, she's got six months to live. I'm like, you ain't taking out my mother. Are you kidding me? She says, I'm going to Bible school. I'm going to come back. I want my kids to know who their yaya is. I want my mother to spoil rotten my kids because she sure didn't spoil me. She beat me with, my, with her slippers. And, I, and that's the truth. You can ask her. There was a point where me and my brother, we went to karate school when I was 14. You know, I got, I got beat up a lot as a kid in the Bronx, and I got thrown down 18 flights of stairs, beat up all the way down, and so I was all bloodied up and ripped. My, everything was ripped up. My mother came to pick me up. I said, will you please send me to karate school? So she did. And the moment she did, after, you know, we would, my brother and I broke a chandelier in the house, and so she, slipper came off, she came after us. You know what we did? And then she tried a roundhouse, and I went, wah. And she was like, is this what I get for taking you to karate school? She never hit us again. Praise the Lord Jesus. (laughs) Anyway, where was I? Be sober, be vigilant. Don't you agree that drugs can mess with your mind? Alcohol can mess with your mind. That's why you don't drink and drive. I mean, it's common sense. All right, now. Uh, there was a lady I knew years ago. She had come to church in the other building, and she had cancer. She had breast cancer. And so we prayed for her, and God healed her instantly. It was a miracle. And she came back to church. She was praising God. Hallelujah, Jesus saved. Jesus healed me. Then, a couple of months later, she left the church. And I was like, what? and I called her up and said, what's going on? I haven't seen you in a couple of weeks. She goes, well, I prayed for a friend of mine. Uh, who had cancer, and she died. Okay, so what does that have to do with church? She says, well, it doesn't work. I said, but you're a living proof that God heals. Well, I can't explain it, but I don't believe in it anymore. I was like, so you're telling me that your, your thinking affected your belief system. What you used to believe is no longer valid anymore. So now you're thinking strange. In other words, her, she, she's no longer sober. She's no longer vigilant. She doesn't believe the things she believes in anymore. I was like, you're on dangerous ground, lady. You can lose your life. You realize what God did for you? Now you're thinking wrong. And you're thinking wrong because of somebody else's experience. How about you? What happened in your life? Start thinking on those things. Philippians chapter 4 says this, verse 8, real clear, meditate on things that are true. When you meditate on things that are true, you'll, all those false things will disappear. And anybody who comes with something that's not true will just fall by the wayside. Amen? Now, uh, how many of you ever been to uh, Stu Leonard's? Uh, nah, never mind, Stu Leonard's not a good one. How many of you pull up to a gas station and, you know, you pull your car up and you stand out there by the gas pump and, uh, and you just stand there? And the guy clerks come, comes out and says, uh, yes, can I help you? Nope. What do you mean, nope? This is a gas station. You pulled your car up right next to the gas pump. Do you need gas or not? 
Nope, I don't need anything. I just pulled up. <laughs> you don't do that, do you? You pull up to a gas station because you need gas. I don't know anybody who enjoys going and pulling up to a gas station just standing there and spending their time at a gas station. Same thing with you. You wouldn't go pull up to a, a Stu Leonard's and just walk around. But, but see, the problem is you can't because you can eat and then walk out. But when it comes to a gas station, you pull up for a specific reason, right? I mean, you go to stores for a specific reason. Let me ask you this. Why in the world do you come to church? There's got to be a reason why you're here. Now, I know some of you got invited and some of you, you know, you, know, you really don't want to be here. You can't wait. They promise you lunch after service. But why are you here? Because you're here so God can do something with your thinking. You're here to hear the word because the, when the word affects your thinking, it affects your beliefs. And it, if it affects your beliefs, it'll change your life. In other words, when you hear the word about who you are in Christ, you'll start to realize, you know what, I don't need that bottle anymore. I don't need those drugs anymore. I don't need those pills anymore. I don't need to be codependent anymore. Why? Because the word of God is true, and the truth has set me free. And I'm here to understand who this new creature in Christ is all about. Now, let me ask you this. Who, think about it, who do you listen to the most? Think about it. Don't answer yet. Take a minute. Take your time. Everybody head bowed, every eye closed. Think, who do I listen to the most? I'll give you the answer. And it's right for every single one of you. Ready? It's not your best friend. It's not your husband. It's not your wife. Do you know who you listen to the most? And it's not God. Do you know who you listen to the most? It's your doggone self. Because your mouth goes everywhere your ears go. You listen to yourself more than you listen to anybody else. Now, you need to think about what is coming out of your mouth. Because what comes out of your mouth influences your hearing. And if it's influencing your hearing, it'll influence your thinking. If it influences your thinking, it'll influence your heart. Listen, we do this, we do this whole thing. You know, this is my Bible. I am who I am. I can do what I say. Some of you are on autopilot. But you got to say it because you need to hear it. It's just not a dumb confession. It's the truth. When you get up in the morning, thank you, God, for this day. Thank you. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it because I am in Christ. Now, old things have passed away. I'm not going to make the same mistakes I made yesterday. Today's a new day. Today I am the head and not the tail. I am blessed and not cursed. I am above and not beneath. My body is whole. My body listens to me. And today I will eat a good porterhouse steak. No, no, that was me. That's my thinking, sorry. That's my confession. Do you understand what comes out of here? The first place it goes is right here. When you, feel, when you say, well, I don't feel like, guess what? Yes, you don't. You're right. You're ab whatever you say, you're absolutely right. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he, the Bible says. That's why Jesus said, be careful what you say. He says, it's not what goes in a man that defiles him. It's what comes out of him that defiles him. We take in a lot of junk all day long. But man, don't let it slip out of here. Because once it does, it'll affect this. If it'll affect this, it'll affect this. If it affects this, it affects this. Once it affects this, the Bible says out of the heart are all the issues of life. Amen? Now, let me throw this out. Your heart is your filter system. What you believe is your filter system. Let me explain. Now, I don't know if you, you may not know me like Janice knows me, but Janice knows I'm pretty cheap, right? See, yes, 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 yes. I don't like to spend money, right? Yes, you could say so, yes. So I am, huh? Why is the spender? Why is the spender? No, I'm just cheap. Anyway, yeah, short arms, no pockets. <laughs> Janice, you want money? Can you, I can't reach my pockets. So, so listen, I say that to say this. I'm always thinking of ways to save money, to be a little bit more efficient. I'm really not cheap. I'm just, I just like to be efficient. 
So I always look at things. Like last year, I wrapped almost the whole house in tarp, right? <laughs> it looked ridiculous. You know those tarps? Because I wanted to save on heat. And I don't know where. We got a breeze coming through the house. I said, I don't know. I'm not going to bother. I'm just going to wrap the whole house in tarp. So, huh? Inside and out <laughs> in tarp. It looked ridiculous. Actually, one of our windows, I forgot to take it down. It was up all summer long. Actually, it's been for three summers long up there. And my expert taping is Gorilla Tape, masking, you know, the duct tape. It's everywhere. So anyway, our house looks like it's been condemned sometime. In the wintertime, it looks like, it's like it's condemned. But you know what? I saved about 30% of my oil bill last year. So there. There. <laughs> now, now, listen, listen how cheap I am. No, I'm efficient. Look, listen how efficient I am. So we have this uh, water cooler, okay, and I'll explain why I'm saying this in a minute. We have this water cooler at the house. We've had for years, right? Because we like to drink water. The, the kids, you know, do go to the gym, and we always like to drink a lot of water. Uh, so buying those, you know, those five-gallon Polar Springs things, right, they cost like $5 or $6 and $5 deposit, right? So you're paying $11 for five gallons of water. Like, that's ridiculous. So what I do is I, I stop doing that. We stop the deliveries, and I can do this more efficiently. So when I go to Walmart, I can buy spring water for about 79 cents a gallon. So I buy five gallons, and I go take them home like this, right? Turn the, the, turn the bottle over and just pour, right? And, and, right? And I just pour, fill up the bottle, and there's water everywhere because I miss the hole, and I make a mess. But you know what? I just saved a ton of money on my car insurance. No, it's not a Geico. <laughs> so I've, did, I've done that for a couple of years, right? And a lot of times I just forget to buy five gallons, you know, five bottles. I'm too lazy. I'm like, there's got to be a better way. So the better way that I figured out is now I can save $24 a month on water. I bought a Brita water filter. You know those little jugs with a little filter? Now I just use the tap water. So $8 for a filter. And I tap water, does about that much water. <laughs> so it takes me about 10 hours to fill it up. <laughs> but I'm saving $24. I'm really efficient now. Now listen, I'm in the kitchen anyway eating, so I might as well just do something <laughs> constructive with my time. Now, here's my point. How do I know the filter went bad? Because what the filter does is it, it takes out the taste, the, the fluoride, the chlorine taste, all the minerals and stuff like that, right? So I keep doing that until eventually I keep tasting the water until what happens, now I know the filter is not working anymore. Why? Because everything is passing through. I could taste the, fluor the chlorine in the water. I could taste the Norwalk nasty water. I could taste my pipes coming through. So at that point, listen to me, at that point, I know my filter went bad. And now I gotta spend eight dollars. But I know at that point my filter just went bad. Why? Because the water doesn't taste right. Now, I want you to listen to me. When somebody asks you to do, to do something wrong, to sin, it has to go through your filter system. And your filter system is this. It's your belief. It's your heart. Once it gets in here, this thing plays right or wrong. I, that's all right. I got it. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. This thing plays, doesn't it? This thing thinks all sorts of things. But then when it comes here, you're like, oh, I can get away with that. Oh, no, you can't. When it gets here, that evil thought, that bad thought, has to filter through your belief system. What comes out on the other end will tell you whether your filter is still working or not. Listen to me. When those thoughts come of, of whatever it is, sleeping with that girl or sleeping with that guy, and those thoughts will come. Don't say amen. Because then I'll have to pray for all of you. But those thoughts will come. But the Bible says if you act on those thoughts, then they'll produce sin. So how do you, what happens? That thought comes, and then it gets processed through your little brittle wall fil filter. 
And if it comes out, I didn't sin. I didn't do it. You know what? Your filter's still intact. But what happens is, all of a sudden, it goes through the filter and it comes out the same on the other end. What does that mean? That means there's something wrong with your belief system. Something happened somewhere that you, you need a new filter. How do you get a new filter? You run back to the word. Let me read what the Bible says. That this is the temple of the Holy Ghost and I won't make it sin. I won't put it in a place where it's going to get compromised. Proverbs chapter 5. I got a lot to say this morning. You got time? Yes, I was just waiting for Charlotte to say yes. She gives me the okay to say yes. Praise Jesus. Listen, I'm not saying you're not a Christian anymore, that you're not going to heaven. All I'm saying is you better go back to the Bible and figure out what you're doing wrong. Because if that stuff is trickling through, you need a new filter. Proverbs chapter 5. Look at this. Verse 3. Proverbs 5, verse 3. Check this. Like, you get anything out of this? Yes, no, maybe? My belief system is who I am in Christ. My belief system is this. Well, listen, I was, I was a sinner. Jesus saved my life. I am no longer a sinner. I'm a new creature. Something new happened. Old things have passed away. So those, when those old Bronx things come back, and believe me, sometimes they come back, what do I do? Nope, nope, that's an old thing. Those things have passed away. I will not say that four-letter word. There's a lot of potty mouth Christians out there. Praise Jesus! Again, all your heads bowed, eyes closed. No, four-letter word shouldn't be coming out of your mouth. That means they've bypassed the filter system. You, are been, you have been created in Christ. You are a brand new workmanship. Wow, I didn't get a lot of amens on this one. Then we're going to have to have a private, I'm going to build a Catholic confessional for you people. Because it seems to me a lot of you are sinning, and you need confession. Right, Jesus. Maybe we'll build it right around here somewhere. Right? You've sinned. Go and sin no more. Proverbs chapter 5, verse 3. Look at this. Look. It says, for the lips of an immoral woman drip honey, and her mouth is smoother than oil. What does that mean? It means, man, she says some nice things, and she makes me feel really good. Watch, watch. But in the end, she is bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. Her feet go down to death. Her steps lay hold of hell. Adultery does not happen overnight. Adultery happens because thoughts keep coming, and thoughts keep coming, and thoughts keep coming. And they keep coming through the filter. Eventually, if you don't stop those thoughts, the filter gives out. And then sin happens. The number one problem, ready? The number one problem with the American male today is sexual fantasies. That is number one. You can read any magazine on it, any psychology today, Number one problem. And you know why? Here's how the devil comes. He comes at you with a thought. Oh, did you see sweet, sexy Sally Susie walking down the street? She was hot. Yeah, I saw her. Next day, there goes sweet, sexy Sally Susie walking down the street again. Bet your, hot, your wife ain't as hot as sweet, sexy Sally Susie. Like, hmm, you may be right. Next day, comes down, she comes down the street. There goes sweet, sexy Sally Susie. Oh, ain't no way your wife is hotter than that. Wouldn't you like to have a piece of that? Next day she comes down the street. You deserve that. Next day she comes down the street. Why don't you go over and talk to her? You understand the process? Is it, everybody with me? It goes for you girls too. You see that guy drinking Diet Coke with no shirt? You're like... My husband doesn't drink Diet Coke the way you do. <laughs> Boy, you've got some sexy way of drinking that Diet Coke, honey. You must be on a calendar somewhere. Do you understand how it happens? And what you have to do is the moment that thought comes, get it through your filter system. No, wait a minute. No, wait a minute. 
I'm not going to allow that to come in my life. No, wait a minute, thoughts. I'm going to capture you. I'm going to take you into captivity because I will not allow you to become a stronghold over my mind to corrupt this new creature that I am in Christ. You need to declare, no, wait a minute, I'm a new creature. God made me new, and all those things have passed away. Those old things got me in trouble before. Now I'm a little smarter. I'm sober. I'm vigilant. Good? Remember Adam and Eve? Listen to this. Adam and Eve, the devil came in, the serpent came in and said, Hey, Eve, how you doing? And he, she's like, Hey, I'm cool. What you doing here? Oh, I'm just hanging out in the garden just like you. Isn't this a great place? Don't you love this place? Hey, by the way, uh, you know that guy God? And Eve is like, sure I do. Well, you could be just like him. What do you mean? Well, you could be just like God. But I thought like I am just like God. No, 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 you're not like God. He's, he's hiding things from you. Do you know that you could be just like God and you can decide between good and evil? And she's like, what? You know what? She forgot that God already made her in his image and his likeness. Are you with me? Listen, when, Eve, when God showed up and he asked Eve, said, Eve, what did you do? And she said, well, the devil, he, he deceived me. You know what the Hebrew word is? I forgot. I forgot who you made me, God. I forgot who I already was. He made me forget. In other words, sweet, sexy Sally Susie walks by, she's going to make you forget you have a faithful, loving wife at home. Wow, this is quiet. You'd save yourself a lot of trouble in life if you allowed your filter system to work right. Or you can spend $11 for a five-gallon container of water. Remember the devil came to Jesus in Luke chapter 4? What did Jesus do? The devil came and said, oh, Jesus, let me, let's talk about this. I know you think, you think you're Jesus. You think you're the son of God. You think you're all that in a bag of chips. But I'll tell you this much, Jesus. If you worship me, I'll give you everything here. And you know what Jesus did? Wait a minute. Wait a minute, devil. It is written. In other words, he went back to his filter system. He said, no, it is written, devil. It's not yours. It belongs to my father. Well, Jesus, if you know, if you cast yourself down here, uh, you know, angels have tried. Devil, don't you dare tempt the Lord thy God. Do you understand what he did? He kept going back. He did not forget who he was. And when you're a new creature in Christ, don't forget who you are. I was born again in April of 1986, somewhere in Pleasantville, New York. I gave my life to Jesus. And since then, I have not forgotten that day. And sometimes I slip, but I always go back and say, no, wait a minute, I've been born again. I'm a new creature in Christ. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. I am a new guy. And when I go back, hang out with my old Bronx friends, which I do a lot because I love them, they don't pull me down. I pick them up. Whew. That's good preaching. I haven't preached in two weeks. Praise Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 5, verse 1. Are you still with me? Go to Mark chapter 5 first. Let's do that. Mark chapter 5. Hold. You still got time? Yes. We're staying until 1 o'clock, I think. How about this? I'll let you go early if you let me take up another offering. I got bills to pay. We got a wedding to pay soon. The Broncos and Patriots don't play till 4.30? We got time. No, I'm just kidding. Mark chapter 5. See, I know, somebody. And it's Anna's birthday. Oh, happy birthday. And Mark chapter 5, you there? Watch this. Mark chapter 5, verse 25. You know the story really well, right? Uh, go to verse 21. It says, now when Jesus had crossed over again by the boat to the other side, a great multitude gathered to him. And he was by the sea, and behold, one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name, when he saw him, fell at his feet. And he begged him earnestly, saying, My little daughter lies at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her, 
that she may be healed and she will live. Now here's Jairus. He's got a daughter that's sick, about to die. And he has no hope in this world. Nothing. Until he hears about Jesus. And he says, I heard about a healer. And his name is Jesus. He's from Nazareth. And if I go get him and bring him to my house, my daughter will be healed. Right or wrong? And so what did he do? He ran after Jesus. He said, Jesus, come to my house. I'll cook you souvlaki and baklava and every other good things from Greece that has to offer. But all I want you to do is heal my daughter. And so Jesus said, I'll come. Absolutely. So while he's going, this lady who has a blood, who has her period for 12 years, says, oh, but Jesus, what about me? She gets healed. Now drop down to verse uh, 38. Watch this. Verse 35, sorry. It says, while he was still speaking, some came over from the ruler of the synagogue's house who said, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, stop right there. Did Jesus hear what was said? Did it affect him? No. Why? Because he knew who he was. He, didn't, he allowed it to go through the filter system, and it came out like, nope, I know who I am. I'm Jesus, the son of man, the son of God. I don't care if the girl is dead. I can raise her up. Do you know who I am? The Bible says this, that all things are possible to him that believes. If you ever get in a situation that you think is impossible, you need to stop and declare, wait a minute, do you know who I am? I'm a child of the Most High God. And he gave his life for me, and there is nothing he will withhold from me. I'm in the palm of his hand. He, he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He'll always be with me till the end of the age. Do you know who my God is? He's made me more than a conqueror. I'm an overcomer in this life. I've got the victory. I've been blessed. Remember, who you hear the most is right here, is yourself. Now, watch this. So Jesus says, watch this. While he was still speaking, the ruler came. Your daughter is dead. Verse 36, soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said to the ruler of the synagogue, do not be afraid, only believe. Watch what happens. This, this person says your daughter's dead, and the first thing Jesus cares about is Jairus. He says, Jairus, don't you listen to them. Everybody with me? Watch this. Somebody comes, your daughter's dead, and Jesus immediately says, don't listen. Or he goes over and covers their ears. He goes, don't listen. Why? He was so concerned with what he was hearing. Because it could affect his thinking and it could affect his heart. If it affected his belief, guess what? His daughter would be dead. Are you with me? When Janice was pregnant with Nicolette, you know the story. Her gynecologist said, listen, your daughter has got chromosome issues. These chromosomes are on this side. Your daughter is deformed. Abort her. We ran it through our filter system. Well, uh, the Bible says that by his stripes we were healed. And the fruit of my wife's womb is blessed. That's what the Bible says. So Janice and I looked at each other and said, No, nope, we ain't aborting no baby doctor. Just because you said she's deformed, it's not what God said. We have a God who is more than enough, who is well able to reconfigure her chromosomes. Now, we do question a few chromosomes, whether he could reconfigure them when we look at her every now and then, <laughs> especially when she doesn't listen. That hearing chromosome may have not worked right. I know, she's a good girl. But then again, then again, we, they, she, Janice had her, 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 weekly, her monthly exam. And I said, well, now you have, you have cancer. You have, pre, you have cervical cancer. And she goes, now you have to abort her. I said, doctor, I told you once, I'll tell you again. We're not aborting her, and she will be the healthiest baby that you have ever delivered in your life. And she looked at me and she says, you're crazy. I said, no, my Bible says so. We're Christians. We believe God's word. 
And when she came out, I was, I was right there. It was what, 8 something in the afternoon, 8 12 at night? 8 46 at night. And I watched Nicolette come out. And I'm 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Counting fingers, toes, and everything. And Nicolette came out. <laughs> so I'm, I looked at her, and I'm, I'm angry. I'm looking at her. Listen, listen. If I listened to her, she would never be born. If Janice and I listened to that doctor, either she would never have been born or we could have accepted it and she would be deformed. And she told us this, if you do give birth to her, she'll probably live till she's 16 and then die, I believe. Right? If we listen, if we accepted, if that ran through our filter system and didn't process right, Nicolette would not be here right now, and she'd be deformed. Are you getting this? You don't have to accept what's spoken to you. We are living proof. We have put this thing to the test to make sure it works. You don't have to base it on me. I am not UL Laboratories. But you don't have to base it on my experience. Do it for yourself. The word of God works. And so it wasn't too long after that, and I looked at the doctor and said, give her a score. Did they give the APGAR rating? I said, give her a score. I yelled it, give her a score. And she goes, 9.9. <laughs> I said, you couldn't give her 10? She goes, no, but he's 10. 9.9 is what she gave APGAR, it's one on 10. She was real snotty, oh, no, 9.9. The sad truth is, it wasn't too long after that, that she contracted a disease, her husband left her, she lost her practice, and she died. She never delivered a healthier baby than Nicolette. Do you understand what this is to me? Do you understand what this is to me, what this means to me? This means the world to me. It saved my family. And it will continue to save my family. It will continue. Not only save my family, this can save the world. Amen? Whew. Never forget who God made you. Never forget. I always go back to remind myself. Why? Because I'm listening to myself. I talk to myself a whole lot. People may think I'm crazy, but I talk to myself constantly. You are who God says you are. No, you can do this, Artie. No, you ain't going under. No, that thing that you, your heart beating the way, no, you're fine, don't worry. You just stay strong. You know what they said about you? No, don't, don't worry about it. You keep going. Well, people say you're not called to do, oh, I, I, it's not what people say. God called me to do this. I don't care what people, well, you know, money, money's not coming. I don't care. He, well, you know, the biggest giver just left the church. No, he's still here. God is still here. Yes. Amen. I've seen people come and go. We, when we first started the church, when we were a couple, couple of months, we had some ladies. They were like the only ladies coming to church in the very beginning. And man, they were, they were financing the church. A year later, they left. And I'm like, what am I going to do now? I got no money. They left. Sure enough, another person showed up. Gave double what they were giving. Then more people showed up. And more people showed up. Amen? Right, Jesus. Woo! Did you get anything out of this? Don't ever forget. Don't ever forget. If you remember when the, you can bring the kids in. We're going to receive communion. Uh, uh, let, me, let me just say, give you this quick story. You remember when Jesus was on the boat, and remember they were about to sink, right? And Jesus said, you know, cease, be still, and then the, the, everything stopped. All the waters and everything stopped. And then what happened? Then they got off the boat, and something happened, right? What did Jesus say? He said, did you guys forget about the bread? Did you forget what I did with the bread? 
He says, go back and remind yourselves of how I multiplied the bread and the fishes. Go, go think about that for a while. In other words, be careful what you think on. Don't ever forget who God made you. Don't ever forget what he did on the cross. He went to hell and back so that we can go to heaven. He went to hell and back so we can live. Amen? Jesus is alive, and he's coming back one day. Hallelujah. We're going to receive communion.